I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey, and I'm the workshop coordinator for 240 Tutoring. Today, I'm here to bring you the first in a four-part series on English language arts, grammar, and writing conventions. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you. so that you can follow along and see everything that I'm sharing. So again, this series is going to focus on grammar and writing conventions. And this first part is going to look specifically at sentence structure. Now, as this series progresses, you're gonna see it's going to build upon itself. So today we're gonna to talk about subject verb agreement and pronoun antecedent agreement. Part two, we're gonna talk about general punctuation. Part three, we're gonna talk specifically about commas because those can be tricky. And in part four, we're gonna take all of these and put them together and talk about how do you teach these conventions to our English language learners. Now, if you're wondering, do I need this video? Is this content going to be on my test? Here's a table to show you what all tests this content does appear on. And I highlighted for you that it does appear on the Texas ESL and the Florida ESOL test. And in part four, again, we're gonna focus on how do you teach these things to English language learners. Now, before we jump into subject verb agreement, what are writing conventions? So if you see these words, you know what it's referring to. These are basic skills that allow us to make our writing clear and easy to understand for the reader. They include capitalization, punctuation, grammar, and spelling. Now, when we look specifically at grammar conventions, these are the basic skills that help the reader understand the meaning we are trying to get across as the writer. These include verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and transitional words such as therefore, furthermore, and finally. Now let's look specifically at subject verb agreement. Now this is what ensures that the parts of our sentence connect together. So you can separate a sentence into a subject and a predicate. Now what that subject verb agreement does is allow those things to match up in number so that your subject and predicate match up in number. The verb should match the subject in number. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Over here we have Susan walks the dog versus Susan walk the dog. Now hopefully when you read that you think, yeah, that doesn't sound right, but let's talk about why. Susan is our subject and that is singular. It's a singular subject. And when we look at the verb that goes with that singular subject, we are actually going to put an S on the end. So when you have a singular subject, you're going to have an S on that verb most of the time. Susan walks the dog. Let's look at a different example. The cats climb the tree versus the cats climbs the tree. Now, hopefully you read that and you're like, yep, that doesn't sound right. But let's talk about why. Again, our subject this time is plural. And you will see our verb does not have an S on the end. So when that subject is plural, most of the time, the verb will have no S on the end. So let's break that down in some easy to remember hints. So if you have a singular subject, singular S, there's usually an S on the verb. If you have a plural subject, no S in the word plural. So there's no S on the verb. Now these are general guidelines. The English language is tricky, everyone. There are some times where the rules apply and sometimes there are instances where the rules just don't. So these, remember, are helpful hints. They don't apply 100% of the time. Let me give you an example. When we have third person singulars or pronouns that don't always follow these guidelines. An example, I talk to the dog. I talk to the dog. I is singular but we do not have an S on that verb. So that's one of those instances where the guideline does not apply. But if I say she talks to the dog, well, again, she is singular and we do have an S. So not 100% of the time, but some general guidelines. There are exceptions to those guidelines. Now let's look at pronoun antecedent agreement. A lot of people get hung up on just what is pronoun antecedent agreement even mean? So that means that when we use a pronoun, it matches the noun that was previously used or what we call the antecedent in person, number, and gender. 
So all the antecedent is, is the noun that came previously, and the pronoun has to match that. So when I show you some examples, it should make sense. So Mrs. Douglas is my teacher. She teaches my first period math class. So Mrs. Douglas is that antecedent, that noun that came first, and she is the pronoun. She matches Mrs. Douglas in person, number, and gender. Tyrese found some money at school. He spent it all on lunch. So our pronoun is he, and it matches that antecedent, the noun that came previously, in person, number, and gender. The puppies jumped in the pool. They splashed water all over the place. So there's our pronoun, they, and it matches puppies, the pronoun that came previously, or the antecedent. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because some of them can sound correct and actually not be correct. Remember, the English language is difficult. It's not always 100% aligned with the rules that we think of in our head. So here's an example of one that sounds right. Does someone have their book with them today? So someone is that noun and there is the pronoun. So here it sounds correct but someone is an indefinite pronoun and thus is a singular term. So to grammatically correct this sentence, it should say, does someone have his or her book with them today? His or her would be singular and it matches because we're saying either one in gender. So this is not correct. It would need to say, does someone have his or her book with them today in order for that pronoun to agree with its antecedent. Now let's do a practice question. Read the two sentences below and answer the question. Original sentence, some cats jumps when they are spooked. Revised sentence, some cats jump when they are spooked. What aspect of the revised sentence was corrected? Now some of you are like, okay, I know the second one is correct because it sounds right. Let's talk about why. Choosing why. A, it's looking at the plural S. Cats is plural in both of these sentences, so that can't be correct. Indefinite pronouns like everyone or someone, that's not used here. We're talking about cats, so that's not an issue in this example. Pronoun antecedent agreement. So our antecedent was cats in both these cases, and our pronoun was they. Well, nothing changed there, so that's not correct. What we are looking at is subject-verb agreement. So we have our subject and we have our verb right here, jumps. We see the change actually occurred in the verb because the subject was plural. There's no S on that verb. So the correct answer here is D. Now, I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about subject verb agreement and pronoun antecedent agreement. And I want you to be on the lookout for the next videos where we'll look at more grammar and writing conventions. Of course, we wish you all the best and you can always find more information in our study guides. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can send us questions at the email or you can cite it right here or you can comment right below this video and we will answer those comments. Again, I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey with 240 Tutoring and I look forward to seeing you in part two of this series. Thank you.